Down on the corner of the street where I was born, we used to meet and sing the old songs. We called them dough songs, and we'd harmonize the clear, even though it was the beer that made the tears run. Hi there. Run. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, we're going to make a great little salad. Something that you can count on. Uh, that you, it's a go-to salad. It's one of those perfect ones where uh, you can make it the night before, put it in the fridge, and it tastes even better the following day. You can use it for lunches. You can go for hiking. Uh, because this salad, frankly, has everything in it, in it that you're going to need. Uh, protein and cottage cheese and uh, so more co protein. Uh, anyway, it's really tasty. It's something that uh, is my own recipe and I've used it uh, in lots and lots of ways. So uh, let's just get started. So um, I've got everything laid out here and uh, the first thing I'm going to do, which is very important otherwise I may not get through the night, is that I've put aside some uh, of our main uh, ingredient, which is tuna. Um, and I'm giving some to uh, Ms. Manu. Anyway, it keeps her off the counter and away from, you know, stuff. Okay, so ingredients. <clears throat> For the salad, um, this is now the, the uh, well, this is my, my final recipe. Um, but there's been many iterations uh, over the years and uh, the first time I, uh, I made the salad was uh, uh, about in the year 2000 and it was after I had had surgery and uh, I was looking for something that um, I could eat and would fill me uh, but I could lose weight with at the same time and that was my intention actually to lose weight that just kind of happened. But, um, so, uh, ingredients. Uh, main ingredient, of course, is lettuce. Um, you, you can put in whatever kind you like. The kind I like to use is, um, Trish, what's this one called? Romaine. Romaine, yeah, thank you. Uh, romaine lettuce, I like some romaine lettuce. Um, and uh, I like, uh, I like, um, cheddar cheese. You, you can, I use medium, you can use whatever you like. Uh, of course, uh, the older the cheese, the sharper the taste. Um, I like to get some cottage cheese as well. I, I use 2%. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just showing you the ingredients I use. And um, the funny thing is I don't, I don't shy away from the fat. And um, anyway, cottage cheese. Um, oh, I like, I like radishes myself. I like to have lots of crunch in my salad. Um, some cucumber. And um, these, um, these green onions, uh, sh what are they, schwats? What are they called, Trish? What's that? Are these green onions? Green the, onions. Oh, the green onions. Thank you, Trish. Okay, so, oh! Uh, before before we start, um, the last little bits here are um, I like to throw uh, some nuts in there, um, but I'm a little far from Ottawa, so you'll have to do with walnuts and cashews. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll get started in a minute. So uh, hold your socks, uh, make your list, and uh, or get your better still get your ingredients out right now. And let's make it together. Okay. Okay. Obviously, I'm back. Um, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm just going to leave the camera going because every time I turn it off, I start singing and saying things. So I'm just going to let it go. Okay. So now we've got our um, cucumber in there. You know, you can substitute any of these things in here that if you don't like cucumber, you know, you can put something else in. Some people like to put uh, snow peas in them. I like to do that once in a while, but 
to me it's a little too bittery green for the sun. Okay. Uh, garlic. I'm gonna make some garlic. Uh, make some garlic. I'm gonna grow some garlic. And you're gonna love this dish. Okay, um, always a uh, note to self, always, always make sure you've got all your ingredients before you start. <laughs> uh, I like a lot of garlic in this. This is, uh, you know, you'll, you'll smell like, you'll smell, you won't smell great uh, if you get close to people. But, so what? <laughs> Uh, it beats wearing a gun. And if she loves you, it won't matter what your breath smells like. We have a really great audience here tonight. I'm, uh, I'm just thrilled. Uh, with, uh, you know, our, our, these people who've come out here just to watch this show tonight. So, you don't feel alone. So let's, uh, can we hear it uh, from our audience members out in the back there? <laughs> Thank you. kitchen people that, you know, just give me one knife and I can do anything. But I like having around all the lazy stuff as possible. I have a garlic press. Okay, my little trick here, if you can see this, you know. Frank, can you zoom in on this, please? A little closer. A little closer, okay. There we go. So, um, I just cut the ends off. Okay. A few of these here. It'll take us a minute. I am not Speedy Gonzales. And you don't have to be either. Better to eat salad than go to the hospital machine party or digit. I was talking to my daughter earlier tonight, we were talking about uh, painting and, uh, you know, what it feels like, or, or, you know, just different times to do it, not just like because I want to or you feel like it, but, um, you know, to use painting as a tool, uh, just like anything else, uh, for relaxation, uh, for creating, you know, all the usual blah, blah, blah stuff. But, um, you know, you, you probably have read yourself about, um, I can't remember what the name of it is, it's like healing art or something like that, but some counselors and psychologists are using it uh, with people that find it difficult to express themselves uh, in, in emotions, because art is emotions. It's so connected to um, <clears throat> uh, the creation process because you're actually in the process of creating. And that goes the same, of course, for writing and dancing and, and uh, all of the arts. But um, for me, uh, painting is that. and. Uh, has helped me to, to, um, I mean, that's the difference. You can tell the difference in my work between the stuff I was really 
uh, relax doing or experiment, like really just um, jumping out there and not trying to control things. And that's been my problem my whole life is um, to try and control things. And that was, you know, uh, everything. So you can imagine, um, you know, when art would artwork would come out the same way. Uh, you know, you you you're, you know, it translates into it doesn't have the truth in it. It doesn't have the honesty. It doesn't have the humor. It doesn't have the fear in it. If you're controlling. Um, and I guess really when I am totally lost in it is when I'm just connected with whatever it is that gives us all these gifts like painting and dancing and writing and pottery and <clears throat> you know poetry and I mean just anything where you're creating making love uh, so um, you can you can use it as a tool and you can look at the, the results over the years of how you've come on a journey. And I was looking at that with my work recently. And I'm looking at it more so now because I'm, uh, I've come back into contact uh, after many, many years with my first wife. Um, and we've been having all these really wonderful conversations. And um, it's been good for me to feel um, what I would have been like, um, you know, like as a person had, had I fought it out and, and stayed together and things would have been very different, of course, for my children and me and everybody. Um, but when you separate with somebody who is the only is the child of your only is the sorry is the mother of your only child you um, you know it's a terrible thing if you feel hatred or anger to that person and uh, it of course affects everyone you know that's it, it, involved. So uh, to have that feeling again now, at this part of my life, it's, it's a tremendous gift that she's given me. And uh, I only hope that, uh, you know, I can give that back. Um, so I was saying to Bree uh, tonight online that, uh, you know, I, I feel this will only be helpful for everyone, um, you know, involved, and that it has a ripple effect It'll go out and touch many lives, not just ours. So I've got the garlic ready now. <clears throat> got my press. Pop a couple of these babies in here. And uh, Bob's your uncle. I'm obviously going to have to go out and get more garlic. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was watching Lawrence of, of Arabia last night. One of my favorite films. One of the first, first films I ever saw as a kid in the theater. And it was my, uh, my dad who uh, took me there. And I had a good seat, and it was fabulous. And um, Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about that. Okay, so we got our garlic. So we're making the uh, sauce. And of course, uh, what I like to do is I like to make the sauce separately, I mean, keep it separately from the salad. And that way it keeps your salad all fresh and you just use the sauce when you need to. Okay. So um, let's throw some, uh, our, get our cashews in there. Okay. And we're going to put our walnuts in now. You can use whole ones. That 
you know, it's another crunch factor in there, or the bit one, little bits like I use here. Just sprinkle them around. Okay, that's that. Now oh, look at that. I mean, you know, this has only taken us, what, uh, five minutes? And this big bowl here, you'll get probably three, three lunches out of that. Um, so, and the thing is that after you have this, um, in the evening when you get home, uh, just have a, like a, a small cut of um, a pork chop or um, you know, some chicken breasts. Uh, without the skin, um, and and uh, maybe a little bit of rice, or uh, what was the other thing I used to do? Or I'd have some of the salad, and that would be it. And I wouldn't snack after that meal. Uh, I would just drink water, and um, or one of my my fruit smoothies, and that would be it. And I lost actually. I was uh, two hundred and fifty three. <clears throat> Sorry, I was 253 pounds, and I dropped down to 192 from eating the salad. Okay. Mm. Okay, so we're back. Um, I'm just starting to prepare all of this stuff and I thought this isn't really about making a salad so I'm just going to let the camera roll and we'll do this and every once in a while I'll try and remember to turn around and look at you. <laughs> okay. So I was, um, I was thinking about my day today and um, I was, I was down at uh, the cancer agency uh, meeting with my pain management team uh, and uh, there, it's, uh, there's such a wonderful group of people and I always feel like I'm in the best of care. Um, I, I'm happy to go there, you know, to, to be amongst them. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, they had some really helpful tips uh, for me in managing pain and, and the, you know, the, the side effects around the, the pills you have to take for the pain and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, um, so they're really helpful in, in that and what I, um, Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking about um, how I had. I mean, what would I do when the morphine stopped working? Can you you let Nini out, love? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, anyway, the doctor uh, was <clears throat> said that they've got like a million different uh, pain meds that I can try out. So that made my day. Uh, so let's make the salad. <clears throat> so I like to I like to cut my um, my lettuce into kind of chunks like that. I mean, I don't know if you do it or how you do it. But the reason I like that is that it really captures the oil. <laughs> it captures the oil and it uh, captures the little bits of nuts and cheese and everything. So every mouthful is, is just, well, it's fantastic. So, okay, so that's our lettuce is ready. Um, we're going to just chop up some onions here, and hopefully it's just onions that we get in there. You have any good jokes, 
this would be the time to share them. <laughs> it's funny how we don't, uh, I don't know, in my life anyway, I don't hear jokes anymore. Uh, I mean, well, unless you, I mean, you know, you go on the comedy channel or something like that. But in, um, in the old days, as salesmen, we, that was our, you know, it was like you had a pen, you had your business card, and a beeper, and uh, what, what was the last thing? Um, yeah, and you had that too. So, you know, you're prepared. Whew. Okay, so we got our onions. Those chopped up there. Uh, this this salad, uh, you know, you need some nice fresh garlic with it. If you have any friends that grow garlic, uh, make sure um, you make this salad for them. And I, I you will forever have garlic. I don't know, I, I, uh, I really love a salad in the wintertime. It just makes me feel, you know, like it's my birthday, because my birthday's in the summer. Alright, getting there. That uh, adds nice color, of course. <laughs> Trisha's thinking. Come on, Pete, step it up a bit. Yeah, you know, it's kind of boring here. All right. Well, I'm just trying to think of some other things that happened to me today where I had something that I'd share with you. Okay, there goes the, the greens. Ba 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 ba. All right. So, there's our. <clears throat> colorful, delicious looking little summer salad. All right, that's our base. And uh, what am I going to do here? Okay, we're going to add some of the, this uh, cheese. Cheese. Now, I, I like to just cut it into big chunks. I like my cheese chunky uh, in here. You know, that's the thing um, about eating, is that you should always feel good about it. Um, no, you shouldn't. You, you should just, I don't know. For me, I, I have, I've had a weight problem for almost 17 years. Uh, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, stayed up. And uh, I've always felt really fantastic after I lose the weight. <clears throat> um, but this salad will, it fills you up. It's full of protein. So, you, so if you are trying to, you know, you're doing workouts and you're going for walks and stuff like that, um, this salad will, will it just help propel that whole uh taking the uh, weight off. Okay, so there we go with our cheese. I'm a cheese hound. I'm a cheese hound. I just want to make another sound. So why don't you join me in this carol? Oh, this carol. Of the Eve. All right. Um, that's it for that. Oh yeah, cucumber. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna take a little break. You too. We'll be right back. So we're back with our salad. This is the final segment. We're just doing the vinaigrette. Okay. 
So I've got uh, my uh, garlic is all chopped while well, it's down through the little garlic press. And I've kept aside my cottage cheese. And I've kept aside my tuna because uh, these are the things you're going to add afterwards so that you don't <clears throat> make the salad all wet and sticky and gross before you get to eat it. So uh, what I used to do when I was going to school was I'd make my little vinaigrette and <clears throat> uh, prepare it and put it in one of these little containers with a sealable lid and then uh, put my lunch uh, in the fridge at school and uh, oh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so uh, the vinaigrette. So we've got oil in here. I don't really measure, okay? I just put enough in there that I figure I'm gonna use on my salad and you can reuse it so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so normally I, I prefer a, a virgin uh, oil, like an extra light virgin oil, uh, but I'm out. So tonight I've used uh, canola, canola, because I don't know better. Uh, it's not going to taste the same because uh, the virgin oil really is different. But I'm a hungry man. What can I say? Okay, so let's get that garlic into that oil. I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff about it suffusing in there. But it suffuses overnight. All the little ingredients come together and give you this wonderful taste. Okay, pepper. Get that in there. I don't really use salt. So, oh, this is where the panda sauce comes in. This is oyster sauce. Uh, Panda brand oyster flavored sauce and you just put a few dashes in there to give it color and taste of course. Uh, there we go. So you can see you can see how much I got in there roughly. You, know, you do it to taste. Actually it's kind of important because if you put too much Panda sauce in there it just tastes like oyster stuff. So it, I like the garlic and the oyster sauce together. It's where it suffuses, okay? All right, so do I have everything? Uh, heat. We need some heat. All right, where's my heat? Pete's looking for heat. I don't know. Okay, it's probably in the back corner. No, it's not in there. Looking good, folks. You gotta have heat. You gotta have heart. Before you can think of having a fart. Because if you don't have a heart, you can't fart. It's just the way things go. Yes, here, here it is. Okay. All right, we got the heat in this case. I mean, normally what I would do is I get those little Thai chilies, you know, those little red ones that are really hot. You only need one or two of those. And you just chop them up chop, uh, and throw them in with this sauce. Or uh, chili garlic sauce. It's the Chinese chili garlic sauce. So I just, I um, I just put one tablespoon. Teaspoon. <laughs> it just depends on how how hot you like it. So I just put one. Might be a little too much. You can always add a little more oil. Anyway, last ingredient is red wine vinegar. Now this is the kicker. This is the secret, ladies and gentlemen. A touch of red wine vinegar. Not much. Just a touch. A little taste. 
Okay, your lid. Make sure it's sealed. You don't want it, you want to eat it, you don't want to wear it. All right, and then just shake her up. Shake it, shake it up. Shake it up my vinaigrette. I know it's lame, but it's late, I'm hungry. Okay, now it's ready. And you can see the color, eh? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Let's get the spoon out here. Now, oh. Look at those big chunks of garlic. Big chunks of garlic and hot stuff and, and everything in there. Mmm, just do a little taste test there. Yeah, it's way better with the other oil. But anyway, that's it, folks. That's it in a nutshell. And like I said before, you don't have to add the tuna. Uh, it could be a, a chicken or a pork or little slices of uh, roast beef or no meat at all. All right, so that's it for me. I'm going to go eat. See you later. Happy Easter. I love you all. I love you more each day.